Before we get started on this guide, I want to point out that I already have a guide on how to create your own World of Warcraft private server, so if you don't know how to do that, this link will be in the description below. I already have a guide on how to manage the MySQL information database using Heidi SQL. I already have a guide on how to be a GM and how to run basic commands. I already have a guide on how to create custom items on your WoW private server. My friend created a guide on a red question mark fix for the custom items creation, so make sure to check this in the description if you run into that issue. I already have a guide on creating your own furniture and decorations and adding portals to your WoW server. I already have a video explaining why I don't have a World of Warcraft Burning Crusade private server tutorial. Now with all of that out of the way, all of these videos will have a link to the description below. Let's get started on how to set up your World of Warcraft server in a way that you can solo it by yourself without removing too much from the lore. Assuming that you already have a World of Warcraft private server, you go into the AC Web Repack, into the core folder, or whichever folder contains your auth server and your world server applications. There's gonna be a text file called world server. You're gonna right click it, open with, and select notepad. I'm gonna maximize this and just make the text a little bit bigger. We're gonna go through a couple key stages of this text file. I'm gonna be skipping through this part just to make it easier for you to watch. If you're having troubles finding the sections that I'm at, hold down control and press F and type in the words that I'm at so that you can find them. The very first option that I like to modify is the start player money. I like to start off my players with 10 silver. This just gives you an extra bit of money to start out to actually buy common items that you find in the vendors. It gives you a slight boost of DPS and armor and sustainability to kind of keep the lore and give you the ability to engage more with the vendors in the game to kind of make it more immersive while also giving you a little stat boost. I like to enable all flight paths and I like to enable instant flight paths. I used to keep this disabled because I liked the accomplishments and kind of the exploring. It kind of gave me a sense of fulfillment when I was able to find all the flight paths. But then playing by yourself, sometimes it takes a very long time to get to certain areas where as in retail, you would normally have like a mage or a warlock or someone else teleporting you to those locations. So just to balance it out, I enabled all flight paths. One thing I recommend is ignoring the level requirements to enter a dungeon and ignoring the raid requirements to enter a raid. As you know, to enter a raid, you have to be in a raid group. But when you're single player, you won't be in a raid group, you'll be by yourself. So I like to press 1 to enable the ignoring. Next we get into this minimum quest scaled XP ratio, minimum creature scaled XP ratio, and minimum discovered XP ratio. This is the number percentage of the experience you get when you're doing gray quests. Gre gray quests would normally give you zero experience, but I like to make it so that, that it gives you 20% experience. So it still gives you a bit of replayability if you still want to go through the lower level areas by yourself. For gray creatures, I did the same thing at 20%. For discovery, I left the XP rating at 100% for all discoveries. I don't know why they put it at zero. I think that the game should reward you more for exploring the world. Next, we're going to talk about the creature settings. Creature settings have threat radius in an aggro level. If you're playing some classes, like a warrior, sometimes you notice that in classic WoW, and it's almost impossible to do some quests by yourself because you'll go and hit one creature and you'll end up aggroing about eight of them. And there's no real way around it. It's just how the game is designed. So I like to decrease the aggro radius of creatures to make it a bit more playable by yourself. So you have a lesser chance of pulling big mobs. Next, we'll talk about corpse decay. Corpse decay is how long it takes for the corpses to go away. It's also how long it takes for the creatures to respawn. When you have a lot of players in your world, you want this to be as low as possible because you don't want the creatures to run out. You want all players to be able to do the quests. But when you're playing by yourself, it could be a little bit aggravating when you clear out a whole cave just to have creatures respawn a minute later when you're the only one clearing through the cave. Next, we'll talk about damage rating. Here, a number one means that the creature does full damage. If you wanted creatures to do partial damage, then you could type in 0.7 
to do only 70% of the damage. If you did a dot 5, this means all creatures in the world that are normal do half the damage. In my server, I actually boosted the damage of elites because I got pretty good at soloing, so I like a bit more of a challenge. Um, I lowered the world boss damage to half because I noticed that world bosses would pretty much one hit me every time I played. So the only way to do it solo is to actually bring it down to a manageable level. As far as spell damage goes, spell damage I lowered for just about all NPCs because spells do a lot of damage in WoW Classic. For creature health, I actually increased the health of a normal creature by 10% and elites by 10%. I doubled them for rare elites and I raised them again for rare elites but for the world boss because they have so much health it takes forever soloing them so i like to uh lower it just a little bit so i'm not sitting there for hours on end just killing one boss next let's get into server rates for the server rates this will kind of explain why i raised the npc damage rates and the health rates a little bit because on myself i like to do a two this means 200 percent is health 200 percent mana the rage income is increased my rage loss is decreased uh, so the, the focus energy and loyalty rates are triple and I find that this extra sustainability and ability power is pretty much essential to making solo play manageable and bearable without dying too many times. For drop rates, I kept poor as one. For normal, I put it up to three because a lot of quest items are normal and I don't like to grind non-stop when I'm playing solo. The uncommon has been bumped up to four and I kind of bumped up all the rest because I noticed that if they're all at one, I'll most likely never find an epic item throughout my whole playthrough. And for rare, I might find maybe five rare items at the most in my whole playthrough of leveling up. So I do like to bring these up a bit because I you'll never find them otherwise. It's, it's a very slim chance. Especially with no auction house, this is pretty much the only way that you're gonna find loot that's epic and rare. And if you find that you're still not getting anything, with a threes, then you could bring him up to four, maybe five, but that should be a pretty good amount. Um, for money, I like to bump it up to 50. It sounds like a big difference, but it's actually still not a big difference. This is still just manageable for learning all your skills, all your professions, uh, buying materials from vendors, buying bags from vendors, and learning your mount skills. So 50 times looks like a lot, but it's really not that much, especially if you don't have an auction house to make money off of. For drape, for rate drop of referenced amount, referenced amount is the quest items. So this means that the three will increase the likelihood of the normal items to be dropped and the quest items. But whenever a quest item drops, it'll drop two of them. Here are the XP rates. So 1.8 means that my experience level is 180% of normal experience. So just 80% more than normal. My questing is almost double, my explore is almost triple. Next we have quest money rewards. As I said, money is a lot more important when you're solo, so these reward multipliers really help out a lot. Since we're getting a lot of money and we don't have auction house items to spend our money on, I had an idea to increase the repair cost by two, just to kind of balance out the amount of money that you're getting. The talent rate is how many talent points you get per level up. By, no by default you get one point, here I do 3 points because I like to max out every specialization tree by the time I'm level 80. I like to increase the reputation gain because a lot of the higher level dungeons and raids and quests require you to have a high reputation with some of the hardest factions to gain your reputation with. And it could be very tedious and time consuming. And as a solo player, it could be very annoying to grind it out by yourself, gaining all this reputation. So I like to streamline it a bit faster. The movement speed, I like to increase the walk speed or the running speed by 20%. Now that we have the server stuff out of the way, let's go to the spells. In World of Warcraft private server, when you're a GM, you can add spells to your character after you've created it. I recommend that you make a warrior class because as a warrior, if you add spells that require mana, then it will ignore the mana requirements. And if you add spells that require energy, it will ignore the energy requirements. So as a warrior, you can do any ability from any class. But for some reason, it doesn't work vice versa. If you're a mage and you use a warrior skill, 
it will say that you have insufficient range. You can create a warrior and create any custom class out of it, but you can't make a mage with any custom class out of it. So I highly recommend making a warrior and going into Wowhead, Abilities. In order to add these spells to your character, up in the URL, there's this thing after the dot com in the double slashes that says spell equals a number. Each of these has a spell equals a number. You want to make note of this number. So I will take this number and do right click copy. Before we can add these abilities to our character, we have to make sure that the account that we created the character under is a GM account. We can do this by creating a new account. Account create username password and account set username GM level username 3 minus 1. Now the account username with the password of password has a GM level of 3. So this is a 3 meaning it has full GM level. Now let's open up World of Warcraft and sign into our new account. So, we're going to type in dot .learn and copy in that first spell ID. As you can see, I now have Mark of the Wild on me as a warrior. Now I'll go to the next ability. You can just double click on the number to highlight it. And then blink. And then Righteous Fury. and then renew and I'm just alt tabbing between applications here and corruption now by doing this the game is giving me the top rank of each ability so if you want to be super overpowered and one hit everything then you can do that if you want, but it might get pretty boring and it might break the immersive experience that you want to have with World of Warcraft. So in order to mitigate this, I like to bring down the first rank of all the abilities that I gave myself. And I'll wait about five to 10 levels before I swap them out with the next rank. And that way I'm kind of just giving myself a bit more realism with my gameplay to make it seem like it's a genuine single player experience with World of Warcraft. I can't cast that yet. My character's name is Jitkal, a randomized name I picked for myself. Jitkal is now a level one troll battle mage, ready for his conquest on Azeroth. A battle mage is kind of like a warrior he has plated armor and a big sword, but he still has a couple of spells at his disposal and he might be using a bow or a gun to get ahead. Kind of a cool, unique class that isn't in World of Warcraft natively. Let's fast forward and see how Jitkal looks in about 25 years. So now we can see Jitkal in the future, a bit more experienced. He's seen some things. He's had some friends die along the way. He's helped some people. He hasn't changed the world much, but he's changed the world for just a few people by helping them out, scaring off the bandits from the villages, bringing back old crops that were stolen from farmers. Jitkal's had a rough life, but he has a long way more to go. As you can see, he's acquired some gear, and since he's a, more of a battle mage, he's got some cloth armor, but he's also got some mail and plate armor. And of course, he's wielding a two-handed sword. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you create a world and you get a bit bored, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Maybe Jitkal over here would be happy to come along and explore your world with you. Till next time.